What is up? What is going on, everybody? Welcome back and welcome in this time to the series preview. The Mariners get ready to travel north of the border to take on the Toronto Blue Jays for their second road series of the year. I'm going to break down a little bit of the three pitchers we're going to see for the Toronto Blue Jays, talk a little bit about their lineup, the pitching matchups, and give you a little series preview before the Mariners take on the Blue Jays. Do me a favor, guys, before I get started, hit that like button. helps out the channel tremendously. And don't forget to hit subscribe if you're new. I am about 70 subscribers away from 3,000. Thank you guys for all the support. And if you're going to a game, maybe you're in Toronto, in Canada, you're going to the game, or you're waiting for the Mariners to come back home, download the SeatGeek app or go to the website. Use promo code JSTrident. It'll save you $20 off your next purchase of tickets. Doesn't have to be tickets or doesn't have to be sports tickets, concerts, all sorts of stuff on SeatGeek. So check it out and don't be afraid to use that promo code. Toronto Blue Jays also four and six. I don't know. I always feel like the Blue Jays are kind of like they remind me of the Mariners. Like to me, these are just always similar teams. Maybe just, you know, strong pitching offense that's very capable, but also just has moments of frustration a team that I think feels like they probably should have done a little bit more in the off season in Toronto. Now I think the Mariners had a pretty good off season, but we'd like to see the books opened up a little bit more by Mr. Stanton and company. And I think Jays fans kind of in similar boats. I don't know about their ownership group as much there, but um, yeah, I've always felt like both teams just kind of have a similar, I don't know, just that they're very compatible teams. Both fan base, I think are frustrated. Now the Jays have world series titles, um, granted, you know, in the early nineties, but, um, yeah, I don't know. And, and they kind of mirror each other. They just, they always seem to be close in the standing. So let's dive into it. First, we'll talk a little about the pitching matchup starting tomorrow night. I believe this is the blue Jays home opener. Um, I could be mistaken on that. Jose Barrios will go for the blue Jays. He'll be opposed by La Piedra, Luis Castillo. So it should be a pretty good pitching matchup. I believe both oh, Castillo definitely opened a start. I think Barrios got the opening day start for the Blue Jays. Um, Barrios had a real nice season last year in 2023 for the Blue Jays. 3.65 ERA, 3.99 FIP, struck out 184 batters and only walked 52. Um, you're going to get a fastball, a curveball, and a change from Barrios. He's actually thrown a cutter 2.2% of the time so far in 2024. Not going to read too much into his 2024 numbers. We're talking about two starts, so that's why... For the first three or four, probably, of these series previews, we're really just going to be looking at 2023 numbers. Um, obviously, Barrios is known for that big um, that big Uncle Charlie, that curveball. Um, you know, can get strikeouts, keeps guys off the base pass. Um, certainly not going to be an easy... Someone I think the Mariners can hit. I don't think this is going to be an impossible challenge, but certainly also someone capable of shutting you down. It's not going to get much easier for the Mariners. Um, Toronto can pitch. Now you don't have to face Gosman. Although Gosman's looked a little, you know, velocities looked down so far this year. So it's going to be a challenge. This is not going to be, you know, unfortunately you're not getting that athletic series here or the White Sox or the Nationals or whoever, the Marlins, whoever you want to throw in there for the bottom teams. Toronto's not off to a great start, but they are very capable. The Mariners are too. If I was coming out from the Blue Jays perspective, Luis Castillo has struggled in his first two starts. Um, strikeout to walk ratio has been okay, but just, you know, still has that that little bit of that home run problem that we've seen last year for Castillo. But I think he's, you know, I would say the same thing. You got to be careful if you're the Blue Jays. Luis Castillo is still very capable. So is Barrio. So it's going to be a challenge here for the Mariners. Um, you know, I, I think they probably do have the pitching matchup advantage game one, but not enough where it's just like, you know, this is a slam dunk. Uh, win or anything like that. So Barrios will be a challenge and had a nice 2023. Uh, all three veteran pitchers here for the Blue Jays. You got Brios and you have the veteran Chris Bassett uh, will go in game two. Nice year for Bassett last year, 3-6 ERA, 4.28 FIP, 200 innings pitched, 186 strikeouts, 59 walks, pretty similar peripherals to Barrios. Now Bassett is a little bit different because I think he throws every pitch imaginable. Um, fastball, slider, cutter, curve change, and even a splitter 3% of the time as well. So Bassett is a kitchen sink type pitcher. We know the Mariners have struggled against um, off-speed and breaking balls. So I'd expect Barrios to be throwing a lot of curves and I'd expect Bassett to be throwing the kitchen sink at the Mariners. Now, if I'm not mistaken, the Mariners did hit Bassett pretty hard in Toronto last year. I think that's the one game they won up there. Um, he will be opposed by George Kirby. Really, I think we should have three really good pitching matchups in this series. So, but again, you know, Bassett's very capable. You know, I, uh, I think all three Blue Jay starters are hittable, 
Um, I don't think you're facing three guys that are going to take home the Cy Young, but you're facing three veteran pitchers that are more than capable uh, of getting you out. So the bats are going to have to be out up to the challenge. Two right-handed pitchers to start with Barrios and Bassett. So I'd expect the fairly lefty hand, he, lefty heavy lineup. Going to see Cal in there at catcher. Ty's righty, but he'll be back at first. Polanco at second. JP at short. Probably see Josh Rojas the first two games of this series. Might see Rayleigh and Canzone in the outfield um, on one of the days. Mitch Hanniger had the day off today. He'll be back in the lineup. Um, and obviously Julio as well and Mitch Garver. Probably won't see as much Dylan Moore. Might see him on Wednesday. I'll talk about the starter we'll face on Wednesday. Um, but expect the Levy, hef- the le- Levy lefty heavy lineups against Bassett and Barrios. Wednesday, old friend Yusei Kikuchi will be on the mound for the Jays. Another guy had a solid year last year for Kikuchi. 3.86 ERA, 4.12 FIP, 181 strikeouts, 48 walks, fastball slider curve. And he sort of changed a little bit this year. So uh, we'll see how that works out for Kikuchi. We saw a lot of Yusei Kikuchi came over to the Mariners in 2019, and I just rubbed my eyes, and I think I had hot sauce on my fingers, so holy cow, my eye is burning. That, that's what you guys want to hear on these, but I just rubbed my eye. I'm like, oh boy, I think I got some in my eyes, so bear with me here as my eyes start to water. <laughs> but uh, We've seen plenty of Yusei Kikuchi came over to the Mariners in 2019 from Japan, pitched here in 2019, 2020, and 2021. Certainly had flashes, right? Like We saw the moments where you saw a good quality pitcher with Yusei Kikuchi. Um, 2021 was the Mariners' lone representative at the All-Star game, but unfortunately just dropped off in the second half of the year to the point where at the end of the season, he was actually removed from the rotation at that point. So um, last year looked like he put it together for pretty much the full season, which good to see, right? I have nothing against Yusei Kikuchi. Um, actually, he had some of his best starts against the Toronto Blue Jays, if I recall as a Mariner. I think his one complete game shutout in his career came against the Blue Jays. Um, He pitched against the Mariners last year in Seattle. It was that Friday night game. Was it Thursday? Friday. It was a Friday night game uh, where Teoscar Hernandez had the walk-off against the Jays. That was Yusei Kikuchi against who pitched for the Mariners? Was it George Kirby? No, because Saturday was Gilbert. Sunday was Wu. I think it was Bryce Miller. I think Bryce Miller was on the hill. For that game doesn't matter, uh, but Kikuchi pitched very well for five innings in that game. Obviously, Kikuchi's not a guy that's known for going super deep into the games, uh, but again, another guy presents a challenge lefty. So you'll see Dylan Moore, Luis Urias in there as well. Um, we'll see if Cal catches all three in this series. I, I think early on you're going to see Cal get I'm rubbing hot sauce in my eyes. I got noises going on back there. Who knows what's going on in this house? Um, so we might see Sebi Zavala in that game as well. He will be opposed by Logan Gilbert. So another great pitching matchup um, here in this one. Expect some good pitching. I would not expect a ton of runs in this series. Um, if you can, great. Blue Jays are throwing three good arms out there. You, you do miss Kevin Gosman. Again, Gosman's velocity has looked down this year. So good or bad, I don't know. You know however you want to view that, it's up to you. Um But listen, the Mariners should be able to hang, right? They're throwing their big three back at the Blue Jays with Castillo, uh, Kirby, and Logan Gilbert. And those guys lost their their, lost three in a row with those guys last time, um, you know, in the Guardian series and into game one against Milwaukee. So I, you know, you don't expect those three pitchers to lose three starts in a row very often. In fact, if I would venture now, I know they weren't all in a row last year, but you know, just for that reason alone, I can't see the Mariners getting swept in this series. But again, if the you know if one of those guys is off, these pitchers are all very capable um, of shutting you down for nine innings or for however long that they are in there. So definitely going to be a pitching heavy um, series. Let's look at the Blue Jays lineup a little bit uh, in 2023. Very similar to the Mariners. In fact, same WRC plus 107. Blue Jays were eighth in the big leagues. That's why I said this team is very very similar to me. Uh, good pitching. Offense, I think, is very capable, but just inconsistent. Um, We know a lot of the bats for the Blue Jays. I'll go over them just real quick. In 2024, again, not putting a ton of stock into the numbers for 2024 yet, but they are 18th in baseball with a 91 WRC plus so far through their first 10 games. For reference, the Mariners are currently 27th at a 78 WRC plus. Both teams with offenses that should be better than they currently are. Uh, but this may not be the series for either offense to get going um, with the pitchers that both teams are throwing out there. We know what the Jays like to do. We know their lineup offensively. George Springer, Vlad Guerrero Jr., 
Bo Bichette, Alejandro Kirk's at catcher. Uh, you've got Kevin Kiermeyer's playing some center field. Darton, Dal- Dalton Varsho, former Diamondback, uh, who was traded for Gabriel Moreno. Um, I believe he's kind of splitting time with David Schneider. Um, Schneider really broke onto the scene last year. Um, like some way we have like eight hits in his first 10 plate appearance, something crazy like that. Justin Turner, a guy that I actually advocated for the Mariners to sign um, when they, when they didn't have a DH, you know, Turner, JD Martinez, Mitch Garver, Teo, you know, whoever was available, the team needed a full-time DH. Justin Turner was a guy I liked. Um, he's on the Blue Jays. Former Mariner Daniel Vogelbach is getting some at bats. He homered last night, I believe against the Yankees. Um, Ernie Clements, a guy that's been getting some playing time for them. He's 28. Uh, got about over a hundred at bats with the guardians in 2021. Uh, he's swinging a nice bat so far to start the year. Isaiah Kiner, Isaiah Kiner Falefa, um, who we've seen from Texas back in the day, the Yankees, he's on the Jays as well. Um, I imagine platooning a bit. Kevin Biggio is there too. So some, you know, a, a lineup kind of, kind of similar to the Mariners. I think a little bit, you've got some guys that are very capable with Springer, Vlad Jr. Bo Bichette, Kirk's a tough out. Um, you know, even Kevin Kiermeyer can get you against righties. Um, so can Kevin Biggio, Justin Turner's a solid professional hitter. Vogelback can run into him. Um, but it's certainly a lineup that, you know, so far this year, we've been about average, um, a little bit below. Um, and, and it, ha- it does have some holes in it. Like I said, I, I really think this, this team is very similar to the Seattle Mariners. Um, I like the Mariners lineup a little bit better, but not enough to like, you know, go into a huge rant about that or anything. So listen, three, the three pitchers the Mariners are throwing out with Kirby Castillo Gilbert should be more than capable of being able to handle this lineup. I don't see any reason they can't have quality starts. Baseball is baseball. So you never know. But again, just like I talked about with the Blue Jays pitching is more than capable of shutting you down. This lineup is capable of putting up some runs. Like I said, it's very similar how if I was doing a Blue Jays preview, how I would be talking about the Seattle Mariners. It's a lineup that's scuffling more than the Jays lineup is so far this year. But it is certainly capable with Julio, Polanco, Garver of getting hot and having a big series. So bottom line here is, listen, I think these teams are very evenly matched. Um, You know, I... I never do a lot of baseball predictions because just, I mean, series to series baseball is so weird. I keep saying it, but Oakland swept Atlanta last year. I think the Mariners can definitely win two out of three here. I think I feel like we're due for a good Luis Castillo start, maybe a Logan Gilbert W as well. We'll see how Kirby pitches in the middle. But, you know, if if you don't get that bounce back from those guys, Toronto could easily win two out of three um, or sweep as well. So nothing to me is really out of the question here. I, I think we should get three very competitive baseball games over this week. Um, so yeah, I, you know, I, listen, the Mariners I, at four and six are certainly not in a position where I'm in panic mode by any means. We've played 10 games. There's 152 to go. A lot of baseball left to be played, but you've got to at least start getting some series wins. One, just for, I think the sanity of the fans a little bit, just because we've seen these slow starts before. And number two, do I think four, nine would be the end of the year? No, I I don't, but you're going to get guys starting to press and it just, it, it it can kind of open up Pandora's box a little bit um, in terms of where things can go wrong. And like I said, in my post game recap, the Mariners are sitting at a run differential worse than Oakland through 10 games. So if we're going off 10 games, the Mariners have been atrocious. I obviously think they're better than that. So good time to get going. You know, the schedule doesn't get any easier. You got Toronto, who's tough, the Cubs, and you've got the Reds. You do get the Rockies after that, which should give you a little reprieve and a chance to win a few games, but you got to win a series here somewhere. You know, you you just you eventually you've got to put this together and you've got your big three going. So I I don't think there's any reason you can't win two out of three here. Again, this isn't, if any Blue Jays fans are watching this, me trying to come on and say, oh, Mariners have got this series in the bag. Not at all. Blue Jays are very capable. This lineup, while I know it has some issues with their fans, can definitely hurt you if you're not careful. And the pitching is certainly good enough if their offense can produce some runs. Uh, Barrios, Bassett, and Kikuchi are, are also capable of shutting down the Mariners lineup. So we'll kind of see both teams kind of off similar starts, four and six. Uh, Blue Jays bats a little bit ahead of the Mariners right now, but both teams kind of in a funk. We'll see who comes out of it here um, and gets this series win. Can't split it. Someone's got to win it. 
Um, so we'll see who that goes to starting tomorrow night. I will be live tomorrow night for a members only live stream. Members check the community kit community tabs tonight or tomorrow. I'll have a contest detail and the winner will get a new era hat or something of equal value um, to that. So think about becoming a channel member. If you have not done that yet, have a great day, everybody. If you're wondering, I'm wearing this. Did I say this already? But I'm wearing the same outfit recording this right after my post game recap, but this video is going to be up Monday morning. Have a great week, everybody. Hopefully the Mariners can get a W tonight and get this series started on the right track. Take care, everybody, and go Mariners. Peace.